everybody, and welcome back to another Kings of War Battle Report. I'm Visibly Riley, and today we have Sylvankin versus Free Dwarves in round two of the Call to Arms Universal Battle 2 event. Uh, this battle is fought at 2,000 points, and the scenario was Pillage. First off, we have my opponent's list, which is actually 1995. Um, I assure you, we agreed on 2k, and I'm taking those five points to the bank. Anyway, we open with a Horde of Ironclad with the Brew of Strength and the Throwing Mast of Upgrades. Then we have two regiments of Free Dwarf Shieldbreakers, both of whom have Throwing Mastives. Then we have three regiments of Free Dwarf Rangers, one of whom is Hernius's Rangers. Uh, followed by two regiments of Mastive Hunting Packs, both of whom also have Throwing Mastives. Then we have a Dwarf Lord on Large Beast, two Cannons two Free Dwarf Packmasters, one of whom has the Sacred Horm and the Mastiff Munchberries upgrade. Uh, the other one has the Inspiring Talisman. And then finally, we have an ASB with the Loot of Insatiable Darkness. Now, I'm not sure how familiar y'all are with this army, but the Free Dwarf Packmasters, what they do is they they have a permanent uh, throwing massive kind of, like throwing attack. So it's six shots, I think it always hits on a four, and then it's piercing one, just like throwing massive. Now, the Massive Munchberries upgrade, what that does is it's an aura upgrade, so within six inches, all throwing Mastiffs, uh, when, or the whatever the permanent throwing Mastiff is called on the Packmaster, those gain the Vicious upgrade. Uh, and I think that's actually pretty solid. I really like throwing Mastiffs in this edition. I liked them in the previous one too, so I just, I think it's actually, I think it's really good. The Packmaster with the Inspiring Talisman is an interesting up, uh, unit. Um, I, I, I'm not going to say... I don't know enough about the Packmasters. I mean, I've played against them once now. I know they've got like three attacks. They're a pretty standard hero. They're priced pretty well, so they seem good. But um, they are still slow, you know, given that they're dwarves. And they have no mount upgrades. So, you know, I don't... I don't, I don't re I'm not really sure about them. Uh, but I do think... You know what, I, I'm just going to say they're pretty good. The rest of the army, I actually like quite a bit. I like the three regiments of rangers. I'm not sure about Hernius's in a 2k point game as an upgrade, but I like the ranger uh, ranger units on the whole. I think they're great. And, you know, after all, if you want to play elves, play free dwarves. <laughs> but uh, I like the double cannon. I think that's a, a, a great pick. 1995 it fits because it's two upgrades. And even at 2k, I wouldn't bring that third cannon. I think two is enough. The Dwarf Lord on Large Beast is still, well, a beast. And the dogs that shoot bees from their mouths, I think that, you know, that's just one of the best chaff units in the game. They're so cheap, they have a great shooting attack, and their low speed is offset by the fact that dwarves on the whole are slow, so you don't really need them to go that fast. The only thing I take umbrage with in this list is the Ironclad Horde. Um, I know that my opponent told me they have the Ironclad in this because they have the models actually painted and they really like their Ironclad Horde, and this was a list built on the on the idea that they would practice an army they actually own. So, you know, I, I think that's fine. The Ironclad definitely aren't bad, and if you're going to bring them, bring them in that Horde, but I would probably just drop them from the list. I don't think they add that much. Uh, you don't need the double unlock, really. You just need, uh, let's see, that's three. You've got five regiments, and you've only bought four characters, so you're not using the double at all. So I'd probably drop the Ironclad Horde down to a regiment of something. Shieldbreakers are great. The Rangers are great. Uh, you could even bring a horde of uh, Earth Elementals if you really wanted to. You don't need the heal to make them good. They're just good. You don't even need the Cert. They're just a Def 6 unit. So, yeah, I'd probably swap them for something, probably Rangers or Shieldbreakers, and then use the points you save to buy more Throwing Massives on, or uh, Massive Hunting Packs with Throwing Massives if you can afford it. <clears throat> so, anyway, that's my thoughts on the list. I think it's really solid. Uh, I will say one of the weaknesses I can see in it is that, unlike most Dwarf lists, it's pretty easy to pick apart with Small Arms Fire, but considering Free Dwarves are a Small Arms Fire, maybe it's not that bad. Moving on to my army, you all voted for me to play Sylvankin, and boy, <laughs> I had a real hard time. I've been messing around with Sylvankin list for a while. Uh, the Wiltfather obviously is a great, great unit, but the rest of the list I think is pretty lackluster. Uh, boss Greats are obviously a, a popular unit, but eh. Anyway, let's run through my list and then I'll give you my thoughts on the units in it. First off, we have a horde of four shamblers. Then we have two regiments of Hunters of the Wild. Then we have two regiments of four shamblers. 
uh, four troops of box boss greats, a troop of forest guard, two tree herders, one of whom is the wilt father or wilt daddy. Then we have a forest warden with a loot of insatiable darkness. Now, this is about how I would build a Sylvan kin list. Uh, you can swap those troops for whatever you really want. If you really want Glade Stalkers, I think that's okay. Uh, they're eight attacks as, as a troop, which is fine, but they're 130 points. I still think they're overcosted. And I mean, if the regiment's unlocked, maybe I could see them, but as they don't, I don't really see the Glade Stalkers being all that useful. Uh, you could go for some Windborn and Silver Breeze if you wanted, or you can do what I did here, which is just bring a bunch of boss grades. Uh, I brought one Forest Guard because I didn't have the 10 points to spare. But yeah, I think that four to five troops of elves are going to be pretty standard in your Sylvankin lists. I think that they're, it's much better here than in most armies, mostly because, well, elves don't have that many unlocks. So you might as well use those regiments just to bring troops of other stuff. You don't have unlocks, you don't really have monsters if they're not heroes, so just bring these. Uh, I think one horde of four shamblers is really good. Four shambler regiments are excellent chaff, and this army is all about chaff, or at least my version is. Uh, I think Hunters of the Wild are a pretty underrated unit. They are very strange, and I'm not saying that they're a great unit, but they're cheap. They are melee 3+, plus Pathfinder, Scout. Uh, they're only speed 5, but, you know, def 5, 14, 16, they're a solid unit for a solid cost. And in an army that's just begging for unlocks, I think you could do a whole lot worse. Um, I originally had a bunch of archer troops in this army, but in the end I decided that, you know, just fuck it. <laughs> I'll just go all boss grades instead. Go pure melee. Uh, I probably wouldn't do this again in the future. I would bring a bit more range because it's always good to have some range poke, but I wanted to field an army like this and uh, why not? At 2300 points, my army changed quite a bit. I only have two troops of boss grades and then I have, I think, four or five uh, troops of archers. It's just a different army, right? Like I brought, you know, some master hunters. I think that's a great unit in the list, but it's very difficult to get a whole lot out of Sylvankin. They're, they're a trickier army. Um, the Forest Warden, I think is a really good upgrade. Uh, it, it's the exact same thing it was at the end of Kings of War second edition, but you really need to have some crushing strength to use those Hunters of the Wild. And honestly, I'd rather pay 115 points for a Forest Warden plus the loot than to buy a Brew of Strength and another item, right? Like, I'd, I'd save enough, but you can't really buy anything because you don't have unlocks and all your units are, you know, 90 points plus, unless you're Gur Panthers and then they're 85. But anyway, that's enough yawing about these guys. I think that they are, I think... I think it's an interesting army, at the very least. Uh, I don't think it's very consistent, but, you know, that's not what the game is about in its entirety. Anyway, let's go back into the army, or into the game itself, starting with this scenario, which was Pillage. <clears throat> pillage is, again, a pretty simple one. Uh, normally, you, before you roll off or turn uh, for sides, you place a total of D3 plus 4 objective markers on the t uh, table. They have to be more than 12 inches away from each other. They have to be more than 3 inches away from terrain pieces. And that's it. You take turns going one by one, right? Uh, in this tournament or this event, we were just given 6 objective markers. So you just put out 6. Each of us got 3. Uh, and in this game, I think I won you know, quote, won the roll off, so I put one out first, but whatever. And at the end of the game, you score them, you get one victory point for each objective marker you control. So again, it's one of those turn seven could uh, ruin you if you if you roll it, but meh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, moving on to the actual table. So we see here the, the table setup. Uh, I actually set my screen capture a little low this time. I, I thought it was still set for 30 seconds a picture, but it was set for one minute. So these pictures aren't exactly optimum this time around, but we'll, we'll force through it. So first off, covered in these uh, yellow and blue dots, the, under those are all the objectives. Um, I believe this one was placed first, and then I put one in the wood, my opponent covered these hills. I put them in the woods and then I put them opposite the, the house because why not? Uh, houses are pretty good. I I actually didn't know what army my opponent was playing while I was placing the tokens. Uh, I think around token two I asked and they were playing free dwarves and I was like, well, you know, Billy likes dwarves. So, you know, it's probably going to be something like that. And then, you know, if neither of us have flyers, then screw it. I'll just put stuff behind the, uh, behind the houses and I don't care which side I get. Uh, I did, I'm not sure. I think I won the roll off here. Uh, if I didn't, 
No, I think I did win the roll off and chose uh, this bottom part because it's got the forest in it. But let's go through the terrain real quick. First off, we've got two height nine forests, followed by two height flat pieces of terrain. Then we had two height three hills. Uh, we had one or two height seven buildings. And that's it. So, yeah, like I said before, I wanted this side of the table. I the, the hills could be really good for me because if I charge down them, I'm going to get that thunderous charge. And, you know, dwarves, even free dwarves who have a little, little lower defense are still defense four or five in the ironclads uh, case. But in the end, I really just wanted the forest. I'm just going to hide stuff in my army that I can and just force my way out. Uh, so right here we see the end of... Uh, end of deployment, and you know, it's it's a, I've actually deployed these units, but I've begun scouting. But so let's take a look at that scout. It's actually fun because you roll off your scouting and then you take it in turns. And so I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight scouting units, while my opponent had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight more so we had 16 units that were scouting which was i've never seen that that much scout on the table so at least that was fun uh and let's go yeah so here is the end of how the scouting and uh looked this was sort of my idea for the army was that i had this big core of four of uh of tree creatures <clears throat> and they would just move up one of the flanks keep it tight <clears throat> because the like i said before the hunters of the wild and then the um the horde of shamblers can deal with most medium units uh meaning like a 1416 death four regiment they can they can deal with that right while i've got both of my big trees to just slam into anything tougher uh and i have the ability to surge shenanigans i mean tree herders both have i have i've surge 20 in this list because i've also got surge i think four on the uh on the little forest warden but the trees themselves have surge eight each so i can get some surge shenanigans going on i have decent units i'm not particularly fast but i'm not really worried about that because with the scout move i can be pretty aggressive as you can see here i just went uh, i didn't go my full i went 10 uh, to keep my battle line a bit more stable but still that was the plan uh billy's plan was i well i'm not i'm gonna speak for him because i didn't ask <laughs> but uh, I, th I think it's just to move forward, make sure I'm out of charge range, and then get some shots through. But you can see here a slight mistake, which is this unit of rangers is not far enough forward to see anything. And if they move any farther forward, I'm going to get some charges going. So uh, yeah, this, this unit should probably be deployed a bit over here somewhere. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, the ironclad have to be there. So maybe, it, maybe back here? I don't know. But uh, I think that this is a bit of a mistake. Uh, with or maybe maybe just over here right just like out here free and clear that could be fine um, anyway like I said before it's not a big deal but I, I'm pretty sure Billy realized this very quickly as the game went on so here we go with turn one so turn one went to the dwarves uh, with uh, well you can see over here in the in the bottom left uh, Billy rolled a rolled a hot six on me and gets to go first uh, so I don't think any of the dwarves really moved oh no the uh you can see here the ironclad and then both the dog packs move forward just uh keeping again this battle line nice and neat but otherwise it's just a bunch of bows going into me so uh with those shots they end up doing two wounds to my tree herder or not tree herders uh my four shambler regiment and that's a box card twice to kill me fortunately for me it doesn't happen and we move on so with tree turn one or uh, the Sylvankin turn one, yeah, I just rush forward. Um, I'm the Rangers can charge ten, but I'm not particularly afraid of them. I mean, they're they're a dangerous unit. Don't get me wrong, but uh, this one can't see because it didn't put its leader point on the hill, and no point of it is on the hill because it wants to hide from me. Uh, while this unit can see and is within ten of, I believe the Shamblers, these guys, it's in within ten of a lot of things. But I'm without. I, I'm out of eight of these of uh of the shield breakers which basically means these guys have to charge solo if they want to charge and none of my units are particularly squishy in the tree horde uh in the tree arena the the squishy units are all the boss greats and of course these uh oh i forgot to talk about these my unit of palace or forest guard over here the plan is to uh i actually should have deployed a bit to the left or to the right uh, because the plan is just to sit behind the forest. If this dwarf lord doesn't want to get aggressive, I'm not going to get aggressive. I'm a 
uh, troop of random elves with thunderous charge one. So yeah, my plan is just to make this dwarf lord have to move around the board, uh, waste some of its activations, and if it gets stuck in here, I can just keep uh, throwing boss grates and other troops at it. Uh, and if it doesn't move forward, my plan is just to wait behind the trees and move on to one of these objectives because I'm pretty cheap. Uh, and again, you can do this with archer troops even better in elves. Archer troops are a great unit, by the way, in, in my opinion. They're, they're great in everything but horde, so basically anything but they were last edition. So anyway, I move forward. There's not a whole lot else to do. I could have gone for a long bomb surge, but I mean... I can if I search directly forward, I'm gonna hit this unit or this unit first because they're they're um, on a line with each other, so I get to pick one. But either way, I'm gonna get flank charged by units with crushing strength, so that's a terrible idea. So I just hold back and wait it out. Uh, I do get the aura going uh, in a second here. I'll be down to one wound there. I do not forget. But again, the pictures are automatic. So we move into turn two. And turn two dwarves. Uh, yep, you can see that wound is already off. So yeah, turn two dwarves. Um, again, they don't move all that much. They just move their chaff forward right now because, well, be, uh, due to that scout move, I can get really aggressive with this army. So, yeah, the dogs are moving forward to shoot their bees at me, and everyone else is going to throw dogs. So we have the rangers here firing into my boss crates. Yeah, boss crates <laughs> being defense 3, having no stealthy, and being a 10-12 troop. E you know, they're probably not going to hold up to that. Even one unit of rangers shooting at them isn't great. Uh, and we have, you know, backup dogs and all sorts of other stuff to throw as well. But, uh, yeah, I know these guys shoot here. I think the dogs also throw at me. And then everything else just throws dogs into my <laughs> into my units. And it looks like this in the end. So the boss grace takes six wounds from one unit. Of, well, not just one unit. But one unit of rangers plus the dogs, I believe, threw do uh, bees at me. And then, yeah, the... <laughs> this unit taking 14 damage which is pretty nuts uh some pretty good rolls but you know it, it, it's it's variance right um and trust me later you know the dogs don't do so well in their second bout and this unit ends up taking one more wound i believe uh i got shot by a bow somewhere but <clears throat> yep this is what it looks like the only unit that has dogs left on the table at the end of turn two is oop, the ironclad so everyone else has used their dogs uh, and here's the nerve checks. Yeah, both those units are gone. And there are no charges, so we go into turn two for the Sylvankin. So turn two Sylvankin. Uh, if we walk a picture back, so this unit of Hunters of the Wild, I'm actually going to walk another one just to get rid of those lines, but this unit of Hunters of the Wild has quite a few targets it can charge. Uh, it can charge this, it can charge these rangers because there's space right there, and it's not a particularly bad charge because I can charge the rangers, uh, send something in to kill these dogs, and block the block getting flanked and then it's only rangers that can charge me right there assuming again that i kill the dogs because i can just pivot with these guys and block everything off but i decide i want to get a little bit tricky uh to rock around because if you look here there's a small space that i can fit a unit of large infantry and not have any reprisal so my opponent can do nothing and considering in my last game, I lost due to being a little too aggressive, a little too uh, uh, lazy with uh, <laughs> what I was doing. So instead, I do this, which is I move forward with my uh, regiment of tree, uh, uh, four shamblers, and I just go in front of the Hunters of the Wild. So the Hunters of the Wild angle a little bit so they can see more of the table. Uh, I put position both of my tree men so that they can get ready for counter charges. Uh, they're pretty protected from units. I mean, I think this one... No, it, it, I don't think it can get charged even. I mean, maybe a Packmaster could come in, but whatever. Uh, and yeah, the, the plan here is I've got I've got a Surge Line, just barely, you can't really see it here, but I do have a Surge Line uh, with this Tree Herder for Surge 8, then I have this one of Surge 8, uh, both of whom are elite. I could also go for this Surge if I want to, but I'm going to go for the Bane Chant, uh, and then I back myself up with more Boss Grapes, because my opponent has such a compact list that it's actually difficult to get around my sides. Uh, so I don't need to, uh, I don't need something protecting or projecting threat this way right now. I'm just going to set up some layers, right? And <clears throat> on the left side, uh, yeah, unfortunately, my, my boss grades, I needed them to roll a little higher this turn, but they all roll one for their, uh, for their wild charge. So if I'd rolled a two, I could have charged, uh, these boss grades into these rangers, uh, which would have been great, but instead I roll a one, so I have to take the dogs. <clears throat> Hopefully I can kill them off. 
I moved these boss greats forward. Uh, they were over here. They just roll up. Uh, they are within range of the rangers, but I just didn't want to fiddle with it too much uh, because I could have placed them back and then had cover against these ranger shots, and that would have been the smart thing to do, but I'm not going to lie. I was just, yeah, I, <laughs> I was unwilling to spend the time on it this game, but uh, you can see back here, yeah, I'm just going to sit and not do anything with these forest guard for a while. I should, again, be moving them to the right, but uh, honestly, I'm, I'm just trying to move through the turns and get to my dinner at this point. So that's the plan. Uh, let's see how it all goes. First off, we've got the Bane Chant from uh, from this guy here. That's great. And bam. So I easily get that surge off. I actually just need the one Tree Herder. I just you know roll us like six successes. Actually, you can see it over here. 86. Uh, I got six successes. So I was within six inches, went in there. But the Bane Chant. And uh, that's nine attacks with Elite on fours and twos. I'm not looking for a kill there, but if I do get a waiver, uh, rangers aren't headstrong, nor are most free dwarves. So, you know, they, they're just gonna have to stare at me like every other army. They don't get to, uh, they don't get to charge back. And yeah, we go for that. And here we go with the end of the turn stuff with the combats. First off, on the left here, my boss greats do seven wounds to the dogs, which is pretty good. I think they are a 10-12 to get uh, to kill unfortunately i roll i think this is the roll down here i roll a three and get a waiver instead uh i get these uh these four shamblers into those dogs yeah they just wreck them uh, completely remove them and turn to keep these units in their front uh, i actually rolled this combat first because there might have been some shenanigans going on but i get five wounds and then i get a waiver so yeah these are wavered these are wavered and these are killed so it's a pretty good turn uh, i'm looking forward to how things shape up if i can keep one of these troops of boss greats like this one or this one uh, or even this one <coughs> I think I'll be in really good shape because boss rates really put the hurt on ranger regiments or units like that. Again, death for uh, 14, 16 units. I can punch through pretty easily. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, let's move into turn three and see how it all goes. Turn three for the dwarves. Uh, yeah, this is actually after charges because again, uh, pictures and all that. So these dogs just back up from the boss rates, which is pretty smart. Um, there's no reason to fight. Well, they are wavered, and they want to back up so they can just shoot at me. Uh, I believe these rangers and then these guys throw their dogs, uh, and then these guys also throw dogs, but they oof, they roll so poorly. Oh, no, they uh, this guy throws dogs at me, I think, because he uh, he can. This one is an ASB, pretty sure. But anyway, they throw dogs. They do six wounds to the boss greats. Not looking great for them. Uh, I get double charged against my four shamblers with a unit of shield breakers and these uh, rangers. But uh, they only do eight wounds to me. I mean, eight wounds, still pretty good. But uh, yeah, eight is not really enough to push through. I'm a dash 17 rerollable, so they'll need a nine twice. And let's see how that goes. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, the boss race take 11 wounds, uh, even more. And bam, yeah, so the boss greats are killed off. Uh, this tree took two wounds because the cannons, I believe, fired at it. Uh, the cannons, I, I have actually a chart right here because I was writing down what the cannons were doing during the game. Uh, they're they're pretty average. Turn one was zero hits. Turn two was uh, eight eight hits. So two hits converted into eight. And turn three here, only one of the cannons hit. But it did convert two wounds. So at least there's that. Uh, if it had done one, that's just effectively zero against this Radiance unit. But the big thing here is that I only take eight. I don't break, so I'm feeling pretty confident about this game right now. And let's move into the next turn. So, why did I take two wounds? What happened here? Not sure what that's showing, but apparently I took more wounds? Oh. Okay. Oh, right, right, right. I'm sorry. I was at eight wounds already, and I guess these guys did counter... No, they, they must have shot at me. Because I take two wounds here. I, I don't think that... I'm pretty sure they were wavered. In fact, I'm certain of it. So I don't know what I took two wounds from, probably dogs, but uh, <laughs> yeah, almost certainly dogs. So I take two wounds here, and then yeah, these guys actually take quite a few more wounds. I guess eight was just the first bevy. Uh, so it puts me on five more. My opponent actually rolls poorly on this nerve roll, but it doesn't matter. He didn't need much, and then just backs up to get away from me. So let's see what the Sylvan Kin can do in as a rebuttal. Oh, I do take two extra wounds over here from dogs or bows or whatever. Uh, but I'm not wavered, so at least there's that. 
And here we go. So this is my turn three, Sylvan Kin. Uh, these boss crates actually roll well this time. Oh no, they didn't take two wounds. Okay, this two right here is the number I rolled. So that's my wild charge. Uh, this unit also rolled a two, by the way. So uh, yeah, I'm just marking that off real quick. So here we go with the charges. First off, the boss crates that were here charge into these rangers, uh, just looking to gum them up for a bit. Uh, I send my hunters in to finish the dogs. It's not a great fight, but I might be able to tank these two units. I mean, it's it's really unlikely. Uh, they have Brew of Strength, there's a Bane Chant, and then these guys just have Crushing too. So, meh, probably not likely, but, uh, you know, I have to send something over here uh, to block off so I can deal with this, this side real quick. Uh, yep, and speaking of that side, I move forward with the Hunters of the Wild just to get them out of the way. I get this counter charge going. I send the Wilt Father alone into this unit of Rangers because I'm not really afraid of Rangers fighting me. Um, and then I go for a Boss Wraith and Tree Herder charge onto this unit of Shield Breakers. I tried really hard to get this Forest Warden so I could clip the line of sight to the uh, the Boss Wraiths, but unfortunately with how the Hunters had to move, how they had to move, and how this had to go, uh, it just wasn't possible. So unfortunately I'm not going to get that Bane Chant, which sucks because I'm pretty sure I need it, but they're def 4, so maybe I don't. Uh, boss crates, this is the thing about, you know, people are like, people are really big on the boss crates, and I just look at them and I'm like, aren't these just Hunters of the Wild from the previous edition with Wild Charge? Uh, <laughs> like, it's not like they're Reapers or, uh, or Vampires, right? They're not 20 to 25 attacks on threes with some semblance of crushing, right? These are 4 plus to hit with Elite and no crushing. Uh, still, they're, they're a fine unit, it's just they're not that good, right? Uh, anyway, let's move into the end of the turn. So here we see how things go. First off, on the left, I do three wounds to these rangers. Not the best, but I do waver them, which is funny. Uh, I manage to kill off the regiment of shield breakers. I decide to crab walk to the left with my tree herder. It's actually not possible for these... Uh, uh, shield breakers to charge him, so that's good for me. <clears throat> and then I believe I just sit still with the with these guys I think maybe I crab walked I'm not sure yeah I must have crabbed because I'm not uh, I'm not flush with the tree daddy or wilt daddy anymore uh, speaking of wilt daddy goes in there does six wounds uh, plus the one from the cloak of death so got that seven there I need a nine to break them I don't roll it I'm not even sure I waver these guys but oh no I, I definitely do waver these as well yeah I, I wavered those and then yeah, my trees here charge in uh, is it on the... No, it's not on the uh, the slider. But I hit five, five or six times, and then I wound on threes, and I fail all of them. So, <laughs> yeah, I get five or six wounds and just fail them. Uh, and that's really bad, because this unit was already on six damage. I don't need that much. In fact, one damage puts them on the average to be wavered. And again, they don't have Headstrong or Fury or anything like that. So, mm, just... Uh, it's a little unfortunate there. But, again, I'm not in a particularly bad position so I can afford a little bad luck right now uh, but with that said let's go into turn four so turn four four for the dwarves <laughs> we've got this horde of ironclad really hating boss grades going in they're like how dare you waver those rangers uh, so they got that flank charge they've got 50 attacks on fours and crushing ones they're winning me on twos and, you know I trust I trust the boss boss grades to be able to handle that we have one regiment of shield breakers going into my hunters of the wild I'm not afraid of that. Uh, yeah, one one regiment that's not going to do a whole lot. In fact, if we roll, if we roll back, I think this is the thing: the shield breakers can't get past the boss crates to combo charge. So it's it's even worse. I didn't plan that at all, but uh, yeah, it's just the way the cookie crumbled here. And anyway, so we have this regiment right there. Uh, over here, this is pretty bad. These rangers, because I didn't, you know, I didn't get a waiver or a kill or any wounds, uh, just disengage one inch, have the flank charge on my wilt father after the wavered guys back up. So they disengage one and then back up two and a half. Uh, so, yep, they get a flank charge there. Never a good sign, especially as, again, this list has uh, Bane Chant, so it can get crushed too. So 24 attacks on fours and fours. No like. But, you know, wilt father is a uh, sturdy, a sturdy boy. We'll see about it. And that's going to be it. Let's get into the shooting. So with the shooting, my opponent manages to put five wounds, or four wounds, uh, to be more exact, onto my tree uh, tree herder there. That was caused by the cannons. 
yeah, the cannons did that. Then we have the uh, <laughs> these these poor boss greats just getting bullied by dogs. Uh, yeah, they throw dogs at me. I think one. Uh, or no, not that guy. This guy throws a dog at me and just hits six times, wounds six times, and then this one's like, well, I can do that, and only gets two again. So uh, this is the failure, uh, failure Packmaster. But yeah, Munchberry boy, just wrecking me. Uh, eight wounds to the boss greats, not great. Uh, the yeah, and that's gonna be it for shooting, I believe. Yep. And we go, yeah, goodbye, goodbye, boss greats, goodbye, boss greats. <laughs> or no, th that's where they were. So all my boss greats are gone, but the the tree herder did not go down. I did not lose my Hunters of the Wild, and they weren't wavered, so they took six wounds, but uh, thankfully didn't roll that eight plus to do anything. And then the Wilt Daddy takes seven wounds, which is quite a few, but again, it's a sturdy unit, so uh, as long as the cannons don't just snipe me on my next turn, I think I'll I think I'll be okay, uh, especially with this juicy flank going on. And with that said, let's go into the Sylvankin turn four. So Sylvankin turn four looks a little like this. Uh, first off, we've got a tree herder into the flank of the shield breakers, along with a front charge from my uh, Hunters of the Wild. In the previous picture, you could see them uh, moving back a little bit. That was just to see uh, what I could do if I disengaged. It's nothing, in case you were wondering. But anyway, uh, I go for the double charge there. I move these Hunters of the Wild down the hill so they can participate a bit more. Um, I am a little worried about this getting a flank charge, but because the Wilt Father is falling back right there, and then I've got this unit, it's just not possible. So my flank is protected. I can charge down the hill, get that Thunder 1. So pretty good. Uh, I do take the flank charge with this regiment of um, Shamblers. Hopefully I can do a wound this time with 18 attacks, right? Uh, I am still elite, and I take the Wilt Father and go back into this unit. And after that, uh, you can see the Wilt Father's damage just going everywhere. Uh, <clears throat> Cloak of Death is just an amazing ability and really shows off that, I, honestly, the Wilt Father... Like, I, I'm a big proponent of Shobik in Empire Dustless. I think that it's about as close to an auto-include as you can get in the game, which is to say, you don't have to take it, right? Like, no one forces you to take it to build the army, but you probably should. And it's the same thing with the Wilt Father, which is just... There's just no reason not to bring the Wilt Father, and in fact, this army is pretty weak, in my opinion, uh, on the whole, if you ignore the Wilt Father. So, yeah, bring the Wilt Father. So, yeah, uh, Wilt Father goes in here, and then we've got my Forest Warden just bringing up the rear here. Uh, again, it can get plus one Thunderous, so I believe it's Crush 2, Thunder 1, that'd be great, and I can really, uh, really put the hurt on, but really, I'm just going for a Bane Chant real quick over here. So that's the plan. I, again, do not move this unit as my opponent does not move the Dwarf Lord. I'll take 105 units, or 105 points hiding behind a forest versus a 200-point Dwarf Lord any day. And that's going to be that. So let's see. Uh, with my shooting, I do get the Bane Chant off, and that's it. So combat. In the combats, yeah, just wreck, wreck these dwarves this turn. I start on the right with this unit of four shamblers. I just walk right through. Hernius is chosen. Then the tree daddy goes in, does what uh, they do best, doing a ton of wounds. I mean, it's got, what, ten attacks? Yeah, ten attacks on threes with elite and then crush three. Just pfft, And cloak of death. So, yeah, it just walks right through there. I turn around, go, I don't care what these heroes are going to do. Uh, my other tree herder manages to just, on that flank charge, just wrecks those shield breakers. Uh, I do get a couple hunters in. Now, this was me. You can see here, I'm trying to figure out exactly what the tree herder should do. If I fall back this way, uh, it's these this horde of ironclad can still pivot past my hunters of the wild and hit me. So that's what I was showing there. Uh, and you can see here, 5.2 inches is the exact distance between the ironclad and the tree herder. Meaning, if I fall back, and I fall back 3 inches, I will be out of charge range. Because it's a dwarf, right? It can only charge 8. So that's what I'm going to try for in the end. And boom, I get it. So I roll that 3, rolling back, uh, no charge for you. You're just going to have to content yourself killing my hunters. So with that, we move into turn 5. So turn five, things are looking pretty dire for the dwarves, but it is an objective-based game, and they can still win it if they manage to take down some of these trees, uh, especially with those two cannons in the back here. Uh, as I've spent the entire game, scrolled down a little bit. But yeah, these two cannons could really equal it up, right? Like if one fires into the Wilt Father, actually, 
I don't think they can fire at the Willfather this turn. Uh, but if they fire right now into the Tree Herder, kill it. The next turn they can kill this. You know, they could really, really lay out the herd on me. But anyway, I digress. We've got the Ironclad charging into my Hunters of the Wild, backed up by the ASB to give them Bane Chant. Uh, these Rangers, which were wavered, move forward. Uh, they are looking at some of the objectives over here, uh, just a little hungry. And with that, we oh we've got we've got the little dog people just running around the background, going like, ah, should we try to kill this or the Def Six guy? We don't know. So they yeah they back me up uh, i believe the cannons fired this turn and got a fat goose egg so very unfortunate and i did manage to scroll up uh from this point so yeah unfortunately the cannons do not deliver on this turn and that's what you get with these very high variance units like cannons you don't get the support when you need it uh with the combat yeah the uh the ironclad very easily they get bane chant they very easily walk right through the huntress of the wild uh, 25 attacks i think they only rolled 12 hits but they convert quite a few of those and then get a you know they didn't need a very high nerve roll as i was already at six wounds but yeah they walk right through them and then they turn to face as you can see the reason for this is because originally my opponent was gonna put them like this and i was like well are you know are the pack masters uh are they mighty because that doesn't, you know, it used to block in version 2, but I just have a full-on flank charge with the with Wilt Daddy, and that's not what you want. You don't want Daddy in your flank. It's a bad idea. Uh, so, yeah, it ends up turning, as you can see, which opens up, uh, as you'll see on my turn 5, a uh, combo charge. So, I get I get these guys in uh, because he's, you know, anyway, it's, it's just not, it's not great. <laughs> I get these guys in, I get the Tree Herder in and Wilt Daddy goes into the ASB. Uh, honestly, if I kill the ASB, obviously I want to get that overrun. You know, it's, a, it's only a two inch overrun to make it into this combat. But the bigger part for me is getting rid of that Inspire. It's the only, well, there's an Inspire over here too, but there are only two sources of Inspire left on the table. If I drop, or I mean, there's a Dwarf Lord, I guess, but he was finally moved. Uh, but yeah, if I can drop these two central Inspire, it, it's going to be pretty easy for, for me to just mop up the rest of these units i think so that's the plan uh i did have a charge with my force warden onto this dwarf uh dog tosser and it was very juicy again i've got, I've got the thunder i've got all those things but i wanted to get the bane chant off i actually did forget that i have thunder one from charging down the hill here so yeah it was even more important but i you know i wound on threes with that if i'd get that thunder going so i probably still would have done this uh, even if I hadn't forgotten. And here's what the combats look like. Poof. Yeah. Uh, so first off, on the far right, you can see I, I walk right through that character, this time with nine attacks. Uh, yeah, I just roll insane. Uh, you can see over here my rolls with Tree Daddy or Wilt Daddy. Uh, first off, I do an insane number of wounds, uh, walk right through it, uh, through that ASB, get the overrun into this unit, and then just do it again. So these, you just don't want two tree, two tree herders into you, especially if one is named Daddy. So we walk right through there, and then we can turn, as you can see, because it's going to be turn six next, and I'm on uh, actually zero objectives right now. Uh, Billy is winning with one and two, but it'll be pretty easy for me to just move forward. So I go for some overruns. I overrun with both of the trees towards this objective uh, because they're at pretty high wounds. I've got three and six on my on my trees right now. And then the Hunters of the Wild just turn, as you can see, because they're going to run ten inches forward and just get within three of this one. Because I, I have not remembered to move these guys, and they are within range that they can go over here or they can go here. But I'd prefer to have two units, especially as this Dwarf Lord could just run to... Well, you can't touch the forest because it doesn't have Pathfinder. But anyway, you, you can see what I'm doing. And with that, we go into turn six. So turn six for the dwarves. Uh, yeah, I guess, you know, you just go for the points you can get, and then you hope for a turn seven uh, to get those high victory points. As this is Northern King, so it's not about how, it's not about the attrition. It's not about the difference. just about how much you kill. So, yeah, the rangers move forward. Uh, they are, this, it looks like they're giving me a flank and a rear, but I'm actually, but both these units are in its flank, and it's guarded uh because i'll hit the i'll hit the house and i have to go corner to corner can't do that so it is an impossible charge and moves forward as you can see uh they have no guns to or they have no target to shoot their bows at because i'm hidden behind the forest obviously uh the circus bear over here does not have any 
and we've got the double cannon. So the double cannon uh, actually, you know, it gets one hit through, gets four, and then does three wounds, I believe, to the Wilt Daddy. Uh, but, or maybe it's to these hunters. I'm not sure what they shot at. Uh, but whatever it is, it does not die, which is to my benefit. These dogs, I believe, just chuck at this unit, trying to get rid of it, you know, just real quick before the game ends. It does two hits again. I think it still does two wounds, because it always does, but uh, does not manage to kill the unit. And with that, yeah, it was the wilt, uh, wilt Father that they fired at with that cannon, did three wounds. So with that, let's move on to turn six for the Sylvankin, which isn't all that exciting. I just move my units forward to, uh, to grab some objectives. I move these guys onto the hill objective. I move that onto the forest objective. Both the trees sit on this objective. The Hunter of the Wild sit on this one. And then I move the, uh, the kin here forward to touch this. Uh, this unit got moved a little bit. We are kind of sliding them around, but it happens. Uh, the plan was to just... Well, oh, no, I know what this is. This is showing off... Um, I was measuring distances, so I'm just out of charge range of the Circus Bear over here. So if there is a turn 7, the Rangers could charge me, but uh, yeah, we're just seeing that and seeing if you know I can trap them on the wall or anything like that. Uh, turns out, no. So at the end of turn 6, I am holding this objective, this objective, this objective, this objective, and this objective. So I have 5, and my opponent has 1. And we roll off to see if there's a turn 7, and... There is! So turn 7 dwarves. Uh, yeah, you can see we don't even move the rangers, we just place them right there, and they're gonna fight some of my forest guard, finally getting into a fight. I'm not too worried, maybe I should be, but the rangers have 12 attacks, they're a 4 plus to hit unit, so on average they're gonna throw out, you know, 6 hits, they, uh, they wound on 3s, 4 wounds, they're gonna need 8 to kill me. Uh, on that average again you can get you can get some decent spikes you know variants all that so between a six and a ten but I'll take that that's that's not particularly bad and if I don't die um, that's that's a double rear from these trees it's just real bad so anyway with that uh, said let's see the end of the turn because it's the well we have the cannon as well so I believe the cannon fires yeah so the cannons are gonna fire at my guy over here this guy throws dogs kills off my um my whatever these are <laughs> four shamblers i'm just forgetting uh so kills the four shamblers i it looks like the cannons fired after that they didn't uh we didn't roll nerf that way but they do this tree herder or no not tree herder forest warden uh one cannon did hit did three wounds forest wardens are only in 11 13 so get a 10 once because it's not inspiring and you you get a pretty uh, pretty good game here, right? So I lost this token due to dogs being thrown at me, and then if I lose this token, I only have two, and my opponent also has two, so I'd have to actually do something. Um, but anyway, let's see how it all goes. And boom, I do take the three wounds. I don't die. This unit's dead though, and <laughs> my opponent does manage to kill this off. Uh, you can see over here uh, in the rolls, yeah, with three. Uh, uh, three is to wound, manages five wounds, and then rolls the eight. Uh, actually only needed a seven with five wounds because I'm a 10-12, but yeah, uh, unfortunate that I lost that unit, but you know, it's a troop of elves, whatever. And with that, let's see what the Sylvankin can do on their turn seven. The dwarves did turn, as you can see. Uh, they realize that, you know, they're getting, they're either giving these guys a flank or they're giving them a flank, so they just turn to give them fronts. Uh, this is just showing up where I can hit. Uh, so yeah, I've got two front charges. I just leave Wilt Daddy back here because I need to capture that objective and uh, it's actually slightly out of charge range of this unit. I'd rather have the Wilt, Wilt Father in there, right? Because, you know, it's plus one attack and gives elite to this unit, but couldn't get it in there. So, giggity. Anyway, uh, yeah, I do manage to stay within three inches uh, after I reform on these Dwarf Rangers. So I will still have this objective and let's see how the combats go. Oh no, this is uh, just showing the movement. So yeah, uh, going in there, they've already got three wounds on them, and poof, they are dead. So I still have this objective, I need to overrun a little bit on this. I roll a two, which is good enough, I think I only needed a one. And that'll be the end of the game. So at the end of the game, I have one, two, three, four. I lost this one, and my opponent still only has one. So it is a four to one victory in terms of objectives and then with the uh the king's northern king's uh 
extra point, the battle points, right? So you get plus one point, plus one tournament point for every objective you held at the end of the game. So I get plus four, my opponent gets plus one, and then you also get bonus points for killing. Uh, I ended up killing 1680 of my opponent's army, so uh, that's, you know, what, what, uh, 320 yeah sorry getting tired but yeah only 320 points that that can't be right there's two cannons back there well anyway <laughs> so uh i got a plus four to my battle points while my opponent i believe got a plus three because quite a few quite a few of my units are dead uh if there hadn't been a turn seven right i i would have been able to keep you know keep those units but yeah I, it's it's just what the roll off for. I actually like I like it in that way. I, I like the the victory points getting up on turn seven because that's a dynamic piece, right? That that I, I have agency over. My opponent has agency, but the turn seven, right? Like we roll off to see whether these objectives happen. That's not particularly good, uh, in my opinion, in terms of game design. Because you know, on uh, if the game ends on turn six, I have five points. There's nothing you can do about it. And then if there's turn seven, uh, I lose two. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, that is the end of the game. I did get a pretty sizable win here, which uh, goes well with my sizable loss. And yeah, I think I think Billy is about on the same. I think they won, maybe tied their game one. Um, so, you know, it's still anybody's game <laughs> to get the middle. Uh, but that is the end of the report. Um, as for my thoughts on Sylvankin... I think that, yeah, like I said before, I think Sylvankin are a very fun army to put on the table. I think that a lot of people can do pretty well with them, but I think that they also have a, they might have a hard time actually being consistent tournament performers, which if it's something that appeals to you, go for it. They're a really fun army to put down. I think they have several builds that are in that, you know, not, not that tier list are particularly fun, but like in that B tier, right? B, C tier, which is in my opinion, where, where like most of the fun, uh, fun armies lie. So you get these, uh, you get some pretty interesting builds in there. As long as it has the Wilt Father, I think you'll be fine. Um, as for my opponent's list, yeah, as I said before, I think that this is a really good free dwarf list. I think it's interesting. I think it's fun to play against. Uh, and I love <laughs> I love the dogs. So I love them throwing dogs at me. So uh, the only thing I would swap out of those ironclad. I get why Billy has them, but uh, I, I would not. I would not have those in the list because I think this list is teetering on a very powerful, very interesting MMU list, which is uh, multiple medium units. <clears throat> so... Uh, yeah, with that said, we're going to end it here, and until next time, bye!